have Nikki auditioned in here. Mm-hmm. Why? Maybe I like the way you dance. Maybe I like you. What difference does it make? A young woman dreams of making it big as a dancer in Las Vegas, but first she'll have to strip her way to the top in Showgirls, the adults-only film that's one of five new movies we'll be reviewing this week on Siskel and Ebert, along with a Silence of the Lambs-type thriller starring Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt. I'm Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune. And I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. Showgirls has inspired a lot of curiosity because it's the first big-budget NC-17 rated movie to be released by Hollywood Studios since Henry and June in 1990. What does it do to earn its adults-only rating? Well, it has a lot of nudity, mostly of the topless variety, although there is some sort of vague pubic nudity, and there's also a lot of blunt talk about sex and the kind of thrusting motion in a lap dance and in a pool scene that the MPAA always looks for and says, oh, that can't go in an R-rated movie. But the plot is just another sleazy soap opera, and in many ways, this movie doesn't go nearly as far as the R-rated Basic Instinct, which was also directed by Paul Verhoeven and written by Joe Esterhaas. The movie stars Elizabeth Berkley as Nomi, a woman without a past or much of a future, who moves to Las Vegas and gets a job in a trashy strip joint. Gina Gershon plays the star of a glitzy show in one of the big casinos, and she brings her boyfriend to see Nomi work, although she's as intrigued as he is. You like her? That's Kyle McLaughlin, who also works for the big casino. Attracted by the younger woman's defiance, the star gets her an audition for the chorus line, and they develop a real love-hate relationship. Nomi's got heat. Does she now? Yes, she does. Oh, in a totally different way, of course. Come on. She's going to take the lead? This is a hotel show. This isn't the cheetah. Nobody's going to take my lead anyway, darling. I haven't missed the show in eight years. But you're not getting any younger, darling. The backstage details supply the most interesting stuff in the movie, including rehearsal scenes like this one with the seasoned pros who hold the show together. Okay, music! Go! Ladies. What Nomi soon discovers is that work at the casino may also involve entertaining high rollers. Ladies, we got a great idea. We want to take you girls to dinner tonight after the show. Have some lobster, hear Caesar sing. You ever heard Caesar sing? Man, that guy's great. You'll love it. Showgirls does have a certain entertainment value in its sleazo stupido way, and I wasn't bored by the film. It also has several hilarious moments and lines of dialogue that I'm not sure were intended to get laughs, but I'm glad they left them in because I did laugh. What's disappointing is that the Joe Esterhaus screenplay shows absolutely no ambition to be the least bit better than it absolutely has to be. Basically, he has simply recycled the oldest showbiz formula in the book where the chorus girl takes over for the star and then he's disguised it with a lot of nudity and some fairly routine sex. Right before I saw Showgirls, I saw another Vegas movie called Leaving Las Vegas. It's gonna open in a few weeks and it is so much more powerful and insightful about Las Vegas and about sex that it blows this one right out of the water. I had the same reaction to this picture, Roger, and that was disappointment with Joe Esteros. He's the highest paid screenwriter in history, and I really don't think he earned his money no. this time. It is the most simplistic. It is all about Eve and a G-string, and it really is uh, the, the lines of dialogue, the insight. You said show business details backstage. What, putting ice on your breast to make uh, things uh, stand well, out? That's, that's old stuff. That's I mean, one even detail, that, but also maybe the rehearsal and the audition process and how people get jobs and oh, what they have well, to do to get the jobs. We saw it in a course like line. There isn't anything original no, in this picture. No, there isn't. I didn't a, say there was. Not a single thing that's original in the picture. And is it that sexy? There's one lap dance where you're just a stun that Elizabeth Barkley can do that. Berkeley can do that with her body. Body, but I mean twist around as much as she does but it's not sexy at all and she's not sexy she's uh 
hard around the face. I didn't think she was particularly appealing. I thought the other woman was more attractive. Gina big, Gershon, yeah, yes. more attractive. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they have an attractive star. They don't do anything original in the screenplay at all. I didn't care for the film. Well, I didn't either. And I'll tell you, the thing that bothers me is Esther Haas basically had an opportunity here to break some new ground with, with an NC-17 yes. movie. I mean, when we talk about NC-17, we would like to think that maybe a movie would have some insights into sexuality, right. into behavior, into prostitution in no. this case, or stripping, or into this kind of nothing. a woman's personality, and there's nothing. His movies are all about the same in connection with women. He's, I think he's frightened of them. He always sees them as kind of bitch goddesses with knives and things. He has a switchblade out within 30 seconds of the opening of the movie, and there's absolutely no eroticism involving a relationship between two people. Either he's afraid of them or he thinks that's what the audience wants to see and that's what the audience uh, will see. They're women as rag dolls, violent rag dolls. Okay, next movie and our next two thumbs down for Showgirls, the trashy Las Vegas melodrama with cornball dialogue and a recycled plot.